Hoppa, hoppa, ho, ho. Welcome, everybody, to Stavi's World. We're back in the studio. We've got Eldis. We've got one of my favorite comics, Jess Kirsten. Came all the way to Astoria, Queens. Thank you so much for, for being on the show, Jess. Oh, my God. Pumped to have you. Um, we just introduced her to A&W Zero Sugar Root Beer, which is one of my favorite diet sodas. We're angling big time for the A&W sponsorship. That's, that's really what this podcast is I, all about. As a diet soda so fan. so good. Right? Isn't it incredible? It's so good. It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just love it. I'm not even getting paid. And everyone on the show knows I'm still... I will not plug anything for free. <laughs> A&W has my heart as a fat man that loves a little treat. You know what I mean? Of course. Come on. Who am I talking to? You know, you love treats. Of course. <laughs> yeah. I love treats. And diet soda. First of all, I'm, I'm yes. addicted to diet soda. Diet. What are some of your... Let's let's start diet, diet soda Sprite talk. Zero is my favorite. It's a good I one. love Diet Coke. I mean, I've course, been drinking Diet Coke my whole life. The classic. Diet Pepsi, <laughs> yeah, I'm fine yeah, yeah. with. But this yeah. is like... I'm Next I'm, level. I'm on a, I'm like on another planet. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm telling you. That, I feel I like love I just it. did drug, I know. a major drug. I love having someone on the pod that was a fat child. <laughs> because this is the kind of stuff that we can bond over immediately. Yeah, it was a file. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I, I wasn't fat. My parents made me really. My father fucking blew me up because really? yeah, because I was a little fat, and he'd be like, "You fat fuck, uh, you fucking fat cunt," oh, and no. then I blew up to piss him off. Oh, there I, we go. Re, I ate. I yeah. ate at him. I mean, man, yes. I really blew up because it it enraged him. Yeah, yeah So yeah. I really you got back at. Oh him. my god! I ate every. I ate the furniture. I, I ate everything. I, I love could. that because we have a lot in common here. I mean, although I will say I. I came to being fat just from pure, my mom was just, just, I could do no wrong, oh. and she never wanted to deprive me of anything. Oh, yeah. My dad wasn't, they were both kind of fat. My dad had like a, my dad had a heart attack when I was like 10. Oh, boy. And he lost a bunch of weight. Yeah. And after that, he became fat phobic. Like, once he was, he was like too good for us. The rest of the family <laughs> was fat. But then he was, and then he was like, you, you porky pieces of shit need to get it together. Because he was going to die, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but my mom was just like, and also, it's so funny when you look back at your family and you realize where everything comes from because, yeah. my like, we have alcoholism in the family, mm -hmm. we have addiction, and my mom was so worried about drinking and drugs, mm -hmm. but she didn't realize that we just got addiction through food. Yeah, like, my mom was right. the first person I saw just, like, you know... I, I would go to the kitchen, you know, we had two bathrooms in the house. I grew up in a little townhouse in Baltimore. If one of my brothers was in the upstairs, I'd have to go all the way downstairs to use the bathroom. And I would catch my mom just like sneaking treats and like, <laughs> I was like, this is, you have it's what grandpa had. <laughs> and I have it too, by the way. And by the way, 10 years later, I would spend my adolescence, as soon as I got free reign in the kitchen when they, were, they weren't afraid I would destroy, burn it down, I would make, I was in there making like, Triple double, triple decker sandwiches. Oh, me too. Just like I was going hiding crazy. Food yeah, like an yeah. animal. <laughs> I love that too. And I also, you said you you did it to your dad to make him mad. I I was listening. The only research we do on this show because I love stand up and it's a nice chance to go back and watch people stand up. You had on the on a, an older album. You had it had you you said, <laughs> which basically is the encapsulation of all stand up comedy. Please laugh. I hate my father, <laughs> which was like, which is like, that's what stand up basically is. <laughs> it was just like, it's, so it's funny to hear that it was, it was to, to, well, you know, you prove know as a stand up, there's always someone in the audience that reminds you of your father <laughs> yeah. or your mother. And, and I could, you can have a thousand people yes, screaming, yes. but there's one person like just staring at you, like, yeah, you, yeah, you know, yeah. you're like, dad, you know, oh, that, yeah. It always bothers yeah, you. Yeah, you could be crushing and just <laughs> the guy, the like guy girlfriend in my case this Me happens too. a lot yeah. it's like you know somebody or like the friend who has no idea <laughs> who you are and right. ha is n it is not your taste <laughs> not their taste at all and I will say it's never who you think it's gonna be because I, I when I was younger I was like oh I'm worried about old people they're not gonna <laughs> but it's like old people are sluts too they remember <laughs> they love the I, like yeah, in fact, yeah I was like you know when I started comedy my whole thing was like being a you know a fat little rascal a fat little <laughs> adorable and I had all this pussy eating jokes so I was just trying to get laid and I whenever I saw old women I was like oh they're gonna hate me they love the pussy eating jokes more than anyone they were they were like this I, they, I would have old ladies when I remember when my pussy <laughs> was eaten yeah. by a fat man yeah they haven't gotten eaten out since the Truman administration <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's bringing back memories of Do the sock hop. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, yeah. So, and by the way, if I should. We got we got into A and W Zero Sugar Root Beer talk. Uh-huh. Think about it, folks. Sponsor like sponsorship. Yeah. But I want to say uh, the the show St- uh, Stavi's World. We do a, we 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 have Jess will be here. We'll be answering your co- your questions, guys. That's half the show. I like to you know riff that. a little bit and then. We'll we'll get into people call in and we solve their problems nine zero four eight hundred stav, um, and we'll we'll obviously take some calls. But I want I want people to know that you have you're very I think you have a particular skill set for answering uh, all these questions because you grew up with therapy. Therapy was all over your life. Your yeah. mom. That's another one of those hilarious bits where it's like your mom. You know you're trying to. Um, your your mom's like seeing patients literally she was a therapist my mom so, still is a therapist wow. and she's 79 wow mm-hmm. isn't that amazing that is crazy yeah you think she's slipping you think she's losing her <laughs> fastball well i <laughs> like, have a joke she'll never hear this yeah, thank yeah, god no she's not listening no to- <laughs> chance she's not she's not subscribed to stavi's world <laughs> yeah. we don't have too many almost 80 year old jewish no. ladies <laughs> that are our subscribers <laughs> Can you imagine if she calls in i don't like that you're talking about me right <laughs> yeah <laughs> No, my mom is, um, I, I, I can't do this on stage because she would freak out, but I, ha- I have this joke where it's like, you know how therapists say, so what I hear you saying yes, is yes, that yes. you feel that you're not being seen. It's like, I feel like my mom would be like, so what I hear you saying is nothing. I can't hear. Yeah. <laughs> Speak up. <laughs> yeah, my mom is a therapist. She has saw clients in the basement of our house my entire life. So I had to be quiet. This is that's totally crazy. true. And I lived in the attic and I'm Jewish. But that's, <laughs> that's totally true. It's all how many, true. How many, how many siblings do you have? So I had, I have one older sister, okay. Jennifer, and then my mom married Zach Braff's father. Did you Get know the that? Fuck out I here. swear to God. I, so, I've seen you with like Zach Braff, but I figured like maybe he like a brother in law or no, like some my stepbrother. stepbrother. So my That's mom so and when we were young. So then wow. he and my stepsister And he's not the piece of shit. No. No, 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 no. That's your biological father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. My dad was great. He was he okay. was a very funny man, but he he was a, he had a bad temper. Yeah, he was yeah. a rage of He was not a great difficult. guy, by the way. You, this is so crazy how repressed you still are. <laughs> you've, you've grown up you've grown up with therapy. He fucked me from the age of five, but he was yeah. really he had a great person. Personality. Yeah, but you should see him at a party. <laughs> the tricks he had. It's so funny how we're like, oh no, he wasn't that bad. Yeah. He, he hit bro- me with a sledgehammer, but he was really generous. <laughs> but it was my fault. I was being a bitch. Yeah. He molested me, but my clothes were really tight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, uh, but but my so I had three stepbrothers and a okay. stepsister. Okay, gotcha. Oh, and so then my dad got family. remarried to my uh stepmother who was eleven. And they had to <laughs> <laughs> one of those. Yeah, not a good guy. <laughs> no, no, he was not eleven, but much they, younger. I'm guessing, right? Yeah, four. <laughs> four. Yeah. <laughs> and they had to. So I had a oh wow, half so you brother and a half sister. Like, yeah. So you're basically what so we're forty six. I had forty six. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't and know. And in the house, in the house, who'd you grow? So so that's no, really, why you're in I, the had, attic? I had. <laughs> you were like I everyone had the, the real rooms. Yeah. No, I had one sister, and then I really lived with for a while. Zach and my stepsister. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and everyone else was out of, you know, in college and stuff. Um, but yeah, she, she was a therapist and I have been in therapy since I'm eight. I literally yeah, yeah, have gone yeah. to every single kind of yeah, therapy. Yeah. And that also, by the and way, then I studied to be a therapist wow. and I went for a master's in social work wow. and then became a comedian, which I say is the same thing, except I don't, I don't have to t- uh, listen. I talk. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. It's Absolutely. The same thing. This show is bullshit. People call me for advice. Can you I imagine? Love it. I love it. <laughs> and we both do a shitload of crowd work. Yeah, so yeah, it's like, yeah. we, that's why it's you're really good fun. at it. It is fun. You're, yeah, yeah. you're aware. Like you, even from yes. just talking, to, you're very aware. That's why you're so good at crowd work Dang, because I appreciate you get that. people. Yeah, it's interesting. It's fun, and you do you do it the same way where it's like you're not like crowd work can be a bit of a trick, right? Right. We know there's comics, there's people who have made their living that not aren't even in like New York. You go to like you know a, like a shitty town or where I, I started in Baltimore. There are plenty of guys who. You see them once, you're like, wow, that guy's incredible. Then you see them again, and it's like, wait, they did the exact same crowd work, the exact same way. Right. And it's like, and look, sometimes that happens. Sometimes you get caught in in a situation where you're like, all right, I'm just going to say this easy thing, and I'm going to move on. But the best crowd work is when you're like, there is... 
in one second, I know everything about you. The way that the way you're sitting, the way you're in an outfit that you know you can't pull off, but you were hoping maybe you could, and, but your posture shows that you know you can't pull off a bright yellow blazer. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, why did, you, know, you have like, to be very <laughs> smart and aware in life. You have to understand people, and yeah. you have to really get get it. You have to yeah. get it to be able to do that kind of crap. And you have work. to have also like no other skills. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm pretty perceptive here, but it's like, I can't do anything else. I've, from the, I've been getting steadily dumber for 15 years, but I'm so much better at this one thing. Yeah, you know? I understand. By I the way, the that's gotta be way. so annoying, Jess, because it's like, you're like, I fought my whole life, you know, my whole life the, the, you know, trying to be understood, trying to get respected by my parents. You carve out a great career in show business and your brother is Zach Braff. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like you got a special, one of the best comics working, and it's like this motherfucker's in huge TV shows, movies. You know like, what's funny? You're like at Thanksgiving. And I like, love it. Oh, that's cute. The Comedy Central special? That's cute. So how much is Scrubs making in residuals, <laughs> yeah, Zach? Yeah, meanwhile, he brought Mandy Moore to Passover. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> he Brutal. fucks the hottest, <laughs> yeah, 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 and he yeah. always says to me, "You get the hottest women." Yeah, no, yeah, but yeah. no, you know what's you know what's amazing? <laughs> he comes to stand up shows. Like he came to the cellar last That's week, awesome. and he's like, he's like, I don't know how the fuck you do that. Like yeah. he came on stage with me once at the yeah, underground yeah. at the cellar, and he 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 had. The sweat marks Hilarious. on his arms were like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. he was shaking. Yeah, he goes, yeah, yeah. I don't know how. he th To it's them, so to the, you know, yeah. to these actors, they're like, sure. this is the scariest thing I've ever seen yeah, in my life. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know how you do Which it. Which is crazy. Yeah. Because it's me, like, To me too. Yeah. I'm like, why is this, this is so scary? I, I There's agree. 30 drunks here. I don't <laughs> I respect any the of these people. Way. Especially <laughs> if you get like a middle of the week crowd where it's like tourists, they're drunk. It's like, I don't care about you fucking animals. I feel the exact same way yeah. it's so to me but again that's what i'm saying we got that one we do have that one talent that we keep tricking people into thinking is impressive where are you from yeah. <laughs> Stupid. it's so dumb yeah uh that's it so and you grew up in jersey right with this yes with the I'm with, a, i love jersey yeah. i'm a jersey girl through and through <laughs> yeah. i hate when people put down jersey yeah. they think it's all like snooky and of course I, it drives me nuts it's of beautiful course. it is nice it's funny to have to be so to be so close that it's like you go you go to Jersey you're like oh there's like fucking grass here like <laughs> it's the great. part it's not that far away either no. but and that. I love Baltimore I went to Maryland I wow. went to University of Maryland oh, okay. underground wow. I spent El a lot of Eldis oh yeah fellow Terp. fellow Terps awesome yeah. awesome <laughs> yeah. I love University of Maryland I spent a shitload of time in Baltimore I love, that. I love, I love that. it that's great yeah, yeah I remember on in his in his uh, off campus apartment, I drank so much raspberry vodka Ooh. that I was I, I think I projectile vomited all over. <laughs> Raspberries. It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I was I was pretty hardcore. I was drinking raspberry stoli. Oof, uh, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. I drank a lot of that shit. Well, Stav, Stav had a rough night when he after he got kicked off his campus. Yeah. He came over there. He just like blacked out on Jägermeister. <laughs> I oh, yeah. Drank, Everyone like, got sick on Jägermeister. Yeah. I drank. I drank the. It was the same night that. So I got kicked out of my. I went to. A really shitty school, University of Maryland, Baltimore County, UMBC. Oof. You must be <laughs> familiar with the with yeah, the. Yeah. With, you know, we were always the shittiest school, but I got a scholarship there. Nobody else would. I literally grew up 15 minutes from there. Yeah, but it was the only place that would pay for my housing. So I was like, "That's big." I guess yeah. I'm getting a dorm 15 minutes from my house, but I got kicked out for smoking weed. And really? I'm I'm the one guy that that happens to. It was crazy. This is 2000. What? Eight, That's something like horrible. that. horrible. So I go to, and you know, College Park was maybe 25 minutes down the road. So I just, I didn't tell my parents for months. I just lived on his couch. <laughs> and, then the first, and the first night, I just blacked out. I drank a handle of Stoli Vodka, Jägermeister, and uh, Steel Reserve, I believe, oh, was, how we, was how we ended up. That sounds right. That night? I mean, I was fat as shit because it was like the, the freshman, like 80. Because it's like, you know, <laughs> when you're like a fat kid who loves treats. Oh, yeah. And then you go to a dining hall. Yeah. Where it's like, because we had the unlimited. And oh, it's like, remember wait. remember how much you I ate. Mean, I insane. ate so much yeah. freshman year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I was I fat as fuck. And like, I've gotten very fat on the road. But I look at pictures of me. And I'm a youth, because you, you're like 19. <laughs> so you look okay. But it's like, there's so much of you. You know what I mean? Like, nothing's sagging. But you're like, I'm just like plump you're as shit. You're just going out and out. Out and out. And out face big as fuck. <laughs> Um, 
I would, yeah. So I could hand. I didn't die because I was so fat, <laughs> but I should have. Like the amount I drank was I out of control. I didn't die, obviously. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But I was. I still here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made it. <laughs> that must have been. Oh, you know, yeah. I didn't even think about that. That must have been the freshman. When you get to a college, I ate, I ate and drank. So I've, I drank so much <laughs> University of Maryland. Yeah, 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 yeah. I cannot, I'm, I can't believe I didn't die. Yeah. How much I drank. Well, that it was it, unbelievable. It is so funny when you think about college, where you just take all these kids <laughs> who like have all these issues and trauma from and their child. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and you're like, all right, have the most freedom and the most resources yeah. and get and go into as much debt yeah. and get as fucked up as you want and for the fuck, first time. fuck yeah. everyone. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. fucked so many guys. Yeah. That's awesome. And I was always in a blackout yeah. because I, I didn't want to be with them. Of course. You're just looking for any kind of like, like nice feeling from anyone. Of any, course. Any approval yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, just like I drank 78 beers and was face fucked sounds, in a dorm room. Sounds like a good time. Yeah. You sound cool in college, Jess. I was. I really yeah. was. Yeah. I, I was a fun time. Yeah, just drunk, fat as shit, eating pizza, was, sucking dick. I <laughs> That's all I did. Yeah. I wasn't even that fat. Oh, wow. Well, in freshman year I was. But then I was like, I was pretty okay. But I was just drunk all the time. And I was high all yeah, the time. And I lived yeah. in a sorority house. Oh, that was blast. That's incredible. Yeah. I was attracted to all my sorority sisters. Yeah. But I was just sucking dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I always, I haven't sucked dick in a really long time. I've talked about this on every podcast yeah. I do. But I like it because I'm an eater. Yeah, yeah, You know yeah. what I mean? An oral fixation. Yeah, I do, I'm sure. so oral. So it is I funny. Do. It. I feel, I love eating pussy. And I do feel a little bit Me of too. like. Me too. Yeah, we have a lot in common. <laughs> we love A&W root beer. We love eating pussy. We got fat as shit at Maryland State Schools. <laughs> we hid eating when we were yeah, growing up. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, so much hiding. Yeah. I would I would pack sandwiches for bed like i was going to like i was going to work in the in mines a, all day in a backpack yeah, like you literally had, like a little you lunch had, box you had hiking shoes yeah, yeah. <laughs> i would make myself a little treat for when i went Aww, upstairs that's cute yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it was cute. cute it was cute but definitely i do have an eating disorder for sure <laughs> um no that's how yeah that sounds so fun like i didn't have that much fun in college because of the you know the getting the getting kicked off campus, but when I got back, it was, you know, it was still pretty fun. And For I was getting also high. high. It's so. I know. When you're a kid, too, it's like that's when you're supposed to smoke weed. I, can't, I know. I smoke weed now, and I'm like, all right, this is fine, but that's. Yeah. Smoking weed is for when you're 19. Yeah, and they kids do so many other horrible things and don't get kicked off. Oh, absolutely. That's the most upsetting thing. Yeah. I Whatever. I made friends with some dumbasses, and I was like, oh, cool. I just wanted them to think I was cool. Yeah. You know? Because my thing was, like, I could... I always could... You know, you're loud. It's the same. It's the same, like, the, the, the closeted stand-up in you where you're like, you're, yeah. not, you're not doing stand-up yet, so you just need attention from everyone. You want everyone to of like course, you and that's all that stuff. I yeah. And uh, I can't even imagine, I can't even imagine, th like, that. Pl oh, you know what we also had in common in college? We both wanted to and couldn't get pussy. <laughs> that's, that's another, <laughs> I'm thinking through it now. <laughs> we were both pining over sorority girls. <laughs> I didn't know I wanted pussy yet. Yeah, but there was I something. I didn't know, but yeah. I knew something but was But boy, off. would it have hit the spot if you got some. Oh my God, <laughs> would I would like, have been in yeah. heaven. I did, yeah, I did, I did eventually in my senior year. With oh, a, senior year. Yeah, I, f I fell in love with my a freshman in my sorority. It's wow. it's amazing. That's when, that was the first girl yeah. I was with. Wow. I mean, I fucked around when I was younger and played house. I was sure, always sure, the top sure. and I was. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so you, there were some signs. Yeah, of, but yeah. we all played house i mean that's so mm. common for girls right, you know right, you would right. you would play these things like you know you were the boy she was i was always the guy always, always the guy. The, yeah, <laughs> yeah always yeah, yeah, yeah. um but you know that's when i first had my first like lesbian experience but i still didn't think i was gay right. for years just dabbling yeah i thought i was just like it was melissa i just thought it was melissa something was special about her yeah it was just you her look back and she's like she was all right i was just very gay yeah <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah yeah everyone looks back at like their first love and you're like that must have been an incredible person it's like it's the first person who was nice to you and like and like <laughs> it was let the first you person who wasn't abusive yeah yeah, yeah 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 exactly the bar was so low <laughs> the bar was so low and melissa barely trotted over the first over it. person that didn't hit me yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
Did you have like college boyfriends and stuff, or were you just? I did. I had a couple of boyfriends, and I'd, again, it wasn't the sex thing. Didn't gross. I'm not grossed out yeah, by yeah, guys, yeah. and I can find a guy attractive, and I enjoyed sex with guys. I just didn't. Could never fall in love. Yeah, I could yeah, yeah. never fall in it's love the spectrum with a guy. Thing. Like, right, that's exactly. the thing. It's like you're not fully, Mm-mm. well, you know. No, you're not, you I know. had, so I hate labels. I hate, yeah. you know, I, I would never call myself 100% a full lesbian because I'm not. Right. But I couldn't, I just didn't want to like spend time with a guy. I didn't want to like yeah, spend yeah, the weekend yeah. to yeah. go to the mall yeah, or go to yeah, a movie. Yeah. I just wasn't <laughs> yeah, into it. I was like, yeah, get yeah. out. I'll yeah. suck your dick. Yeah, I'll have yeah, sex yeah, with yeah. you, but I just want to go. Yeah. So, honestly, I didn't mind fucking. I really did Everything you're describing is what most college aged men are looking for. Right. They're like, exactly. they're like, Let's I'm, party. I'm a lot like a guy. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I've yeah. always been a lot like a guy yeah. in that way, like sexually. Yeah. But with women, it's like, yeah, let's hang out all the time. Yeah. You know? But I just, they talk a lot. Yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, yeah, shut the yeah. fuck up. The other night on stage, sounds like you need so a non binary person. You need <laughs> yeah. someone right in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. You know? You're right. Like a feminine non binary they, them. I, I really do think a lot like a guy where I can just, I'm a very sexual person mm-hmm. and I'm not, I don't have like hangups with that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. But I really, I just, you know, when I had a boyfriend, which would never lasted more than like six months yeah, or yeah, even yeah. that long, I don't have Six think. months, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I think I I've just, only had, I've had one r- real actual relationship that was like spanned a couple years and everything else was like six were months. Were you like in love? I was, yeah. But it, I have all my own fucking, yeah. you know, my own the panic of you, whenever you're from a bad, you know, when your parents have a bad relationship, I know you're just like fucked up in so many. And I would get this panic about being in about commitment and about like, cause my dad, his whole thing was like, look what you mu- you know, you guys f- they forced me to come to America. You know, oh. he would blame my mom to, for coming to America. He was like, I want to be in Greece. Like he would insist that he made a mistake as Greece's economy was collapsing, oh he was like, he, and like my cousins couldn't get jobs and like everyone is doing shit. He's like, we really should be there right now. <laughs> and it's like, he just, he was just had this idea of Greece that was just so, you know, fake and idyllic, right? Like so he just, he just wanted, we took him from that or his family was like an obligation to him. And without yeah. realizing it, that's what I saw as like a relationship was like, it's an obligation. The idea that a relationship could like, improve your life that finding someone who really loves you is actually good and could like only help you it just got through my skull you know so i would anytime a relationship actually had potential i would always fuck them up yeah you know or and the only time there was one time where i really did where i fell into a relationship was because i was moved right before i moved to new york this was in baltimore i was about to move to new york and three months, four months, she was going to move to D.C. We were going to be in completely different cities. And it was like, an, okay, so this isn't going to last thing. And then, of mm-hmm. course, as soon as I move, I'm like, wait, I think I love her. Yeah. You know, because it's yeah. like, because you allow yourself to feel feelings knowing there's not the pressure of it happening. Right. And then it's like, well, it can't happen. We discussed this. And so that's happened to me over and over again, where it's like the, the girl I can't get over now same thing. It was a real casual thing. I was travel. It was just like last year where I was on the road for literally a year straight. And I was like, look, I can't really have a girlfriend right now. It's not going to work. And then she, you know, reasonably got a boyfriend. We would hook up every once in a while and have a great time. And I was like, wait, wait, I think I actually, can you be my girlfriend instead? And she's like, no. <laughs> she's like, yeah, I, yeah, like, no, I, I understand could, totally. Yeah, you know, so that's my whole thing. That's the shit I'm trying to get over now. But... Back I really understand that. It's really a lot from what what we come from. It's very very hard. I mean, Absolutely. it comes to, you know, you have abandonment stuff. It's like my mother wasn't around a lot. I yeah. always think someone's going to leave me. My right. father moved out of the house, so yeah. I always, it's like there's so much stuff that we come with. Absolutely. And then each person comes with their own shit. So it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh my god. Oh yeah. It's so let's complex. let's not even forget you know, all the other bullshit that right. whoever is stupid enough to be attracted to you has. Like right. imagine how damaged they are. And then I'm always like, why do they want me? Why do <laughs> right. they? They love me. Right, I'm not right, unlovable. Right. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. must be something wrong with them. It's yeah. so, it's so horrible. Of course. It's hard. And it does, you have, and it's funny because it's like that manifests itself as a, in, as a comedian. It's like, yeah, this is our whole lives. But it is funny to look back at when you were a kid and you see that like attention seeking behavior yeah. before you have it. Like you have this great story about <laughs> when you, you got drunk with your friends and uh, in high school, I believe, uh, Somebody pissed on the lawn and you had to one-up them. Like, what was... Yeah, what, I what? shit on my mother's yeah. lawn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just... just. 
<laughs> you just shit on your mom's lawn. People don't believe, well, <laughs> most people believe it. Yeah, yeah, but some yeah, people yeah, are yeah. like, no, you're not. I'm like, no, I did. Yeah. I actually did. <laughs> yeah. Ask my mother. Like, yeah. if you want to call my mother, I mean, yeah, send yeah, yeah. her a message. I don't know what sure, you want to do. Sure, sure. Her, Book she, a session and then yeah, bring it up. Yeah, she, I really <laughs> yeah. did. Yeah. Um, yeah, I did. Because it was like everyone. It's on I, my special on Comedy Central, right, but I actually special, really hilarious. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and because that was just, I'm, I'm desperate for fucking attention. <laughs> and everyone was just getting drunk. And, and we know like, it was the first time I ever got drunk, and I had my friends over, and it was it was during the day. We were fourteen. <laughs> it was during the day. Yeah, my, it was on a Saturday, and and we were wasted. Yeah, of course. Um, I th I probably I think I I definitely drank around two six packs of beer because yeah, I was an yeah, addict. Yeah. I'm an addict, yeah, so course. it was the first time you know. From the get-go, I yes. drank everything. Um, and we all went outside to smoke cigarettes because I wouldn't let them smoke in the house. Right, so right, this right. is in the middle of the day in, in, a, in an area where there's all w wealthy people in New Jersey. <laughs> They're just driving by and everyone's smoking. And, and uh, my a friend Hebrew Laura, school who is I, taking a break to smoke right, cigarettes. Right. And my friend Laura, who I just saw in Portland, we were just talking about this oh, and dying laughing. Yeah. She pees outside on my mom's lawn and we're yeah. all cracking up Pops laughing. And I'm squat. like, oh, wh what can I do to get attention to one up her? You know, because I'm the class clown, need everyone <laughs> right, to like me. Right. Right. And I had a shit. This Hilarious. is true because I was wasted and I was smoking cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. And I, of course, fucked my face with food because yes. we had chips Come and all on. kinds of shit. Nothing so, better. So I went, I was like, I have to shit. And they're all like, shit on the lawn, <laughs> shit on the lawn. Because yeah, yeah, we were yeah. out there for like an hour, yeah. hour and a half smoking. Yeah, you know, you're yeah. drinking it's beer, smoking. And the and fact that that was the first time. That must have felt incredible oh. to be drunk smoking a cigarette yeah. for the first time. Yeah, well, smoking, drinking outside, uh, just eating, whatever. It was yeah. beautiful out. It's still great the <laughs> thousandth time I've done it. <laughs> I can't, like, because, like, now it's a little treat to smoke a cigarette when you're drunk. Like, I try not to smoke anymore because I'm, you know, fat as shit. And, and it, I figured after 30, it was like, cocaine or be fat. <laughs> cigarettes or be fat you know what i mean there's a couple things where it's like after 30 you have to decide so now it's like a little i still won't do coke but i'll smoke a cigarette every once in a while yeah it feels incredible it's amazing when you're four and it's the first time you're getting that nicotine high and your friends are like shit it'll be hilarious oh, like, God. i can't imagine yeah. how you must have felt so good that must be the most ecstatic shit you've ever taken in your life. <laughs> well, I kind of don't remember taking the sure, shit or anything. Sure, I remember sure, sure. when my mom, well, I'll tell you really quick. Yeah. I, I don't remember taking, I, I don't remember actually taking the uh, shit. Okay. But I remember she told me how hard they were all laughing. Yeah. I, mean, yeah, I mean, she's yeah, like, yeah, I'll yeah. never forget yeah. the whole thing. <laughs> but course. but I remember the next day how sick I was because this was a Saturday. I didn't even go to school on Monday. That's how wow. sick I was from how much I a drank. A two-day hangover as a teenager. Two days. Day, two wow. day hangover um and but my the next day i was laying on my floor on sunday because i couldn't even attic. lift my yeah. <laughs> i couldn't even function yeah and i hear pounding on my bedroom door my mom came home <laughs> and so where was your mom screaming by the way? I don't even know. She was she never was home. For, oh, really? She never home. Interesting. We'll yeah, get into she, that next. Finish well, the story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, that's why I'm fucked up. I'm yeah, serious. Yeah, yeah. She wasn't home a lot. Yeah. And she was knocking on the door, pounding on the door. Yeah. And I, I, I couldn't even get off the floor. I mean, I literally, it was, I was so sick from yeah. how much I drank. Mm -hmm. It was horrible. And I opened the door and I was on the phone with my friend Amy, who's, I had a very close group of friends and, and Amy and I said, oh, my God, oh, my God, she found a beer bottle, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a yeah. beer cap. I'm, I'm dead. Yeah. I'm going to be in so much trouble. I was freaking out. And I opened the door, and she's holding the dog by the leash. <laughs> I mean, by the collar. And she said, I told you not to let the dog shit in front of the house. <laughs> and she took, she grabbed, you know, and they grabbed with the nails. She yeah, grabbed yeah, my yeah. shoulder. I had nail mark Crazy. she grabbed me and she grabbed the dog and she took us both outside and she put the dog's <laughs> nose in my head. that's incredible and the dog and then i'll never the dog just like <laughs> looked yeah up do you think the dog like, knew your, this is your not, pheromones of course. The dog is like, this is not my shit like i'll just i feel like the dog looked at me like i didn't eat doritos yeah, and like yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, dominoes yeah and yeah yeah that's hilarious there's a pepperoni in that yeah yeah, yeah. it was like <laughs> I didn't eat brisket. That's hilarious. Yeah. No. A human was, shit is yeah, to blame really, on a dog is so was, funny. It was, I, I felt so, <laughs> it was, I felt so awful. Yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. 
I couldn't even believe what was going on. I was yeah, so insane. sick. I couldn't believe the dog's nose was in my <laughs> shit. I'm like, what is happening? It was so confusing. I love that your mom and felt Amy the heard need. the whole thing because yeah. I just like dropped the phone. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. I said, hold on a minute. So she heard oh my, my mom God. say that. It was like it's been the running joke. It's insane. With my That's friends an insane. For, you know, thing. did your mom ever find out it was your? Oh shit? yeah, I told yeah. her. We laughed <laughs> so hard. I told her years later. I mean, we did, died laughing. Did the died. dog ever forgive you? I don't know. My mom. My mom. <laughs> got rid of the dog she gave him to a farm oh, quote gotcha. unquote when I went to camp one year yeah. I mean there's been a lot of abuse <laughs> my dog just disappeared Hilarious. one year it's yeah, a lot your, of abandonment your dog crossed your I love the idea of a therapist who's that fucked up too that's really funny <laughs> a therapist that feels the need to like she made you watch even if the dog did shit yeah, dragging why you out I to watch to, why did I watch that's so true I've that's, never thought of that before that's crazy why did I have to watch her it was put metaphorically putting your face in shit was watching you <laughs> oh my watching God, the dog so true. It's like, I've never thought of it's that like you did this why did I have yeah. to see that yeah that's it like, was part of the punishment I guess yeah 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 a hundred percent um, that's so funny. That is, that's, that's insane. I and wonder you, and why I had to, I guess I had to watch the dog be, I don't know. Yeah. I don't get why that. I that's, had. it's like psychological punishment. Like when you played sports and you would like fuck up, sometimes the coach would watch, would make the rest of the team run that, so that, I, so that a they lot. were mad. I played sports yeah, and yeah, that yeah, happened yeah. a lot. So it's, I think it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Your mom is watching, the, the dog is suffering because of you. <laughs> She was, that is why you know, she, that you're right. It's a double That's whammy. Why. Both get punished. It's very, it's very, um, uh, there's very, it's a very economical way of punishing. You know what you're, I mean? Two that's for one. exactly why I had to watch it. And so no snitching though. Your sister didn't tell on you or anybody told that you were getting drunk. That's kind of, that's kind of nice. Jen wasn't home. My sister gotcha. wasn't home. I think she must've been in a friend's cause she was what's 18 at the time. Gotcha. So she, w or she, she was, was in college actually. Oh, so she was yeah. So where would your mom go? I don't get it. My this mom, is before she my got mom remarried? was with my stepfather at the okay. time at that point. And she wasn't around a lot. She was um, she was a therapist that was out a lot, and she was helping other people a lot. This mm. is a very it's an interesting thing. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. and she's done a listen. I at this point forgive her for the most part because like a she's really done a lot of um, work, and she's a very different person now. Gotcha, gotcha, very. Gotcha. And she has apologized a lot and she's really made up for it in my adulthood. Like she's really shown up for me in my life. I have yeah, to say that's good. so much. That's huge. That's huge. Yeah, yeah. Which most parents don't do. Yeah, um, of course. And like, I can't tell you how much she's shown up for me from like whatever, 25 on, you know? Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But it was rough. Yeah. It was really rough. And I don't think... That you can really redo that. I think it's so much damage yeah. that you can't ever fill that hole. Like 100%. I joke about it on stage, but like when the audience claps or gives me a standing ovation, I'm like, it'll never fill the hole. Like it, <laughs> yeah, no matter yeah, yeah. what oh, you no, do, that hole is empty. Yeah. And it's that mom thing that no person, no amount of applause, no yeah. amount of food, no matter of drugs, like it will, it, I, it just will never be filled. Yeah. I am, I, there's an emptiness in me that yes. mom didn't, Phil. If things went right, you would you would be a therapist with like a nice androgynous husband or wife. <laughs> That's yeah. not, you know what I mean? Yeah. No no need to Except be on I stage. go for really, really femme women. I love oh, a fucking hot femme Good for you. heels. Yeah. Is what that about your guys? type? Yes. You know. It is. Pretty yeah. much. I mean I'm I'm open to whatever, honestly. I'll I do I've I've dated people, you know, girls across the spectrum, but I mean, mostly, I guess mostly I have very too. feminine. I mean, my, you know, you know, I mean, uh, no, that's true. I I do go. I like women also with no makeup on, naturally pretty. Like, yeah. I don't love a ton of makeup, kind of yeah, like yeah, this, yeah. like with the lips. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hate yeah, that yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also do. I I love. I just love women. Yeah. Guys. I'll, um. I. You know. I find men attractive too. I. What was your type? Is it was, was it a feminine man? No. Too? No. Not at all. Because I, I have, like a guy. I have a friend I, who she would 
fuck the most feminine men I get and that. masculine women. And she was just kind of in the middle there. Right. That was really her thing. That makes a lot of sense to me. She would like peg feminine men. I get it. <laughs> you know, I like, totally yeah. get that. And I yeah. think that's hot. Yeah. But yeah, I'm yeah. not. I'm not, not into you. feminine men. I would be into a more masculine man and I would be into more feminine women. Yeah, that's not the yeah. way God intended. Which is weird because <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. want a more masculine man to peg me and I want to peg a yeah. more That makes sense to me woman. though. Really? It's, diff- it's like... Sometimes you want Chinese food. Sometimes you want yeah, that's you know, true. Pizza like right. You don't now. want pepperoni in your lo mein. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, you want. You know what I mean? You don't want shrimp fried uh, garlic knots. There we but go. But it, it's all. <sighs> that yeah. was close. I almost didn't. Thank you, Eldis. I almost didn't get that one out. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense, though. Yeah. Um, I'd love. We'll. T- we gotta have you back to talk more about. There's so much to talk. about. I know. About. There's a lot. <laughs> we we need to get to. Let's get to some questions here. Let's let's take your let's take your expertise, sure. our combined expertise, and uh, solve some of these people's uh, problems. Eldis, hit us with the first one. Hey, God, I every really time clam Eldis. Up. <laughs> it's not gonna it's not gonna work, motherfucker. He has no technical challenges, hey, my friend. God, I really <laughs> clam up on a voicemail. Uh, my okay. husband is taking a new weight loss drug called Monjorno or. It. Manjaro, and uh, it's an injection. It's meant for people with diabetes. He does not have diabetes. Um, he's lost about forty pounds before he started this, just from nice. like juicing and eating less and working out. And juicing. I'm super supportive of his journey, um, but I'm getting a little like concerned that he's taking this drug. It's super mm. expensive. You don't know the long term repercussions. I'm like. I'm not going to do it. And um, I'm, I'm getting a little self-conscious because our uh, weight-to-weight ratio mm-hmm. is getting not tighter good. and tighter as he loses weight. And I feel like I'm going to have to start losing more weight. <laughs> um, just so you know, he's 6'2". He's probably 220 now. He started at 260. This is a lot of um, And I, I fluctuate between 150 and... 190 and I'm probably at 180 right now. Okay. Um, so had my own like, weight struggles in the past and I have a mom with severe <laughs> mental illness who's yeah, she's like, 300 pounds right very now. No, run it back on, a little else. <laughs> <and laughs> I, I got it, I got it, I got it. So let's let her finish and I'll, we'll do the recap for you. A mom with severe mental illness who's like mm. very heavy on on the weight loss drugs and oh. did fenton in the eighties and ended up having a heart problem because of it. Mm. And, and just have a lot of feelings about it. Wanted to see what your feelings are. Okay. Um, and, and I know you're on kind of a, a weight loss journey and what you think about these new drugs. We're getting All right, there. Thanks. So to recap here, she, her husband has been losing a lot of weight He's already lost 40 pounds and he went on, there's like a new drug, you know, these, there's like a, what's this one called? Mon, Mongiano. She said Mongiorno. <laughs> Mongiorno. Ozempic. Like, I don't know. DiGiorno. If DiGiorno. Like, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 If DiGiorno starts making weight loss drugs, they put little pills in the pizza. <laughs> now we're talking. Oh my God. You I'll eat one pizza them. and you don't have to eat the rest of the yeah. day. That's a, that's an idea. <laughs> so basically her husband has lost a lot of weight and there's two separate issues I'm picking up on here. One, she's starting to get a little self-conscious. Because he keeps losing weight and she doesn't. Mm-hmm. And they, they were probably, it sounds like they were pretty, they were both pretty chubby and happy and he's losing a bunch of weight. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's number one, which that can be, that's problem enough, right? Mm-hmm. Like there's nothing, you know, you just kind of feel, you just kind of feel your significant other mm-hmm. getting better and being like, are they getting ready to replace me? I know. You know what I, I mean? thought that, that feeling. Too. Yeah. That's a tough feeling. And it's like, very, that's, you know, it might not be true, but it's hard not to, especially if you've had, abandonment issues, whatever. And then the second thing is her, she comes from a background where her mom took a bunch of like crazy weight loss drugs in the eighties, had a heart problem, clearly had some kind of like eating disorder, whatever. And I think it probably fucked her up too. So Mm -hmm. now her husband, so these drugs are all like, everyone's losing a lot of weight on them, but there isn't like, no one does know the long term effects. Mm -hmm. So I think she's kind of worried about that too. It's kind of like what we're discussing where just you kind of seek out it's it's how ironic that like her mom was somebody who had a problem with like weight loss drugs and now it's like her husband completely years later is taking these like new drugs so she's it's kind of a double-sided thing 
Um, I get the worry about like, well, what the fuck's going on with all, why do you, what? You're losing weight. You're getting hair plugs. What's going on? <laughs> you know, like I get that worry for sure. Um, but that's you got you got to take care of those two separately. I think. Um, she also says the drug is expensive. So it's kind of like this thing of like she's subsidized. She's potentially worried that this is some kind of perfect storm of all her insecurities where she is subsidizing her husband getting hotter the same way her mom traumatized her. And at the end of this, she's going to be broke, still be chubby. And her husband will be like ripped and getting pussy from like a yeah, 30, totally a 25 agree. year old. You yeah, know? I so, know. Yeah. So <laughs> that, these are her issues. Um, and, you know, you're right. To, listen, do like we need a little bit more context to really be able to help to help you out. Um, I think your I think your worries are uh, it doesn't are they founded in is this just what you have to really ask yourself is like, is this reality? Am I really am I, or am I reading too much into this? Am I just worried about this because I'm feeling insecure um, or has this guy has your husband Husband, right? Yeah, husband, giving you a, an actual reason to worry. Mm -hmm. You know, have you caught him? Have you have? <laughs> did, he, did he download Tinder on a bachelor party weekend? He was like, no, it was for Mike. <laughs> I didn't. I don't know this. Yeah. Is he all of a sudden working extra hours? You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. So I don't know, but if everything is going right in your in your relationship and everything feels good, then you don't have much to worry about. But if you're, f I don't know. You have to ask, like, is is shit going weird between you two? Uh, there's a lot, you know. And also, like, um, are you, do you even, do you find it attractive or is he becoming a different person? And then do you want to lose weight? Do you want to, you know, join him on this thing? Because I feel like that, that happens a lot too. I feel like couples doing it together can be kind of like a bonding experience. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, it can be, it can kind of, you know, create this rift but so you have to figure out like do i want to go go along for the ride and i think you're right to worry about the these drugs but you all that's another thing you have to think about is like am i really worried about the drugs or am i just wor am i just having flashbacks from my mom doing speed and doing a richard simmons Sweat into the 80s tape, which, by the way, I did do with my mom as a fat yeah, child. Yeah, <laughs> as a fat child, me and my mom were doing aerobics in the living room. Um, I know someone who went on this drug, like a, a friend's sister went on it, and apparently she did lose like 40 pounds or something pretty quick. But then she started putting back on, so this <laughs> yeah. woman should just hang in there. Yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> has, so hopefully, hopefully, the husband just starts getting fat. Oh, interesting. Again. Sabotage your husband. Back on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So he'll yeah, yeah, blow up. Th that's actually the real solution here: is sabotage your husband's <laughs> well-being. Make some start being start meal prepping for him and pouring butter into his <laughs> into his chicken and broccoli. Start. <laughs> he's like, mm, what is this? Like, oh, just a new into his chicken. Yeah, and broccoli. yeah, yeah, yeah. Pour liquid ghee into his into his green bean casserole. I feel like a good way for her to approach it is like you know just solve all the problems by being like, hey, I'm happy you're losing weight. This drug is a little sketch though. Maybe we can like look at long-term exercise and diet and stuff and not relying on like drugs for maintaining the health or but, whatever but he's gonna do it if it's he's, working he's in yeah, it it yeah, sounds like he's, he's in, in the it. fucking True. zone dude. exactly yeah. if he's already he's lost it. 40 he's you know what i mean like and it's possible i think the real the real there's two possibilities here he's either just going like psycho mode on losing weight we've all been there when you start to see results and you're like fuck it i'm just gonna i just need to do it and he's addicted to the weight loss yep. and he'll do whatever and or he's working out it's he's working out he's doing it all that's weirdly her best case scenario because the other scenario is he's getting ready this is like right before you you uh quit your job you start working on your resume you know what i mean like I know what, this, yeah. this, I, those are the two options yeah, yeah. <laughs> and one is much better than the other because one is just like you know support him through his weight loss and then if it, it where it ends if it ends be there for him and then also maybe can you do some healthier stuff in your life because it's not wrong you know it's it's good for you to eat a little better you know uh, even if it's motivated by marital angst <laughs> um, but um and then the other one is just something you know probably probably isn't the case i don't know we don't want to wish the worst on it but it is a possibility because that does happen sometimes when people are getting ready to jump ship on anything they're like all right let me improve myself 
while while I'm still drawing this paycheck, let me let me enroll in a continuing education course, and that's you know working out and losing a bunch of weight. So, you know, good luck. Let us know what happened. Um, we I don't know. There's there's too much. There's too many variables here for yeah, us to give you anything it's, definitive. It's, it's, there's a lot going on here. But that is our read of the of the situation. And good luck to you, sister. Call us back with updates. Uh-huh. Hit us with another one, Eldis. Dave, I got a, I got a tough one here. Uh, <clears throat> me and my ex are going through a custody divorce case. Mm. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I was really hurt by what she did to me. Makes sense. So I went and got the, the most expensive, most Jewish lawyer I could find. <laughs> the best most lawyer in Jewish town. lawyer. And we had our pretrial today where she showed up unrepresented. And my lawyer absolutely fucking rocked out. Hell yeah. And now I have the opportunity to absolutely financially ruin this bitch. <laughs> and she's in the courtroom crying. <laughs> the judge is ordering her to <clears throat> oh, pay boy. back child support, Jesus pay for Christ. guardian ad litem. It's a lot of money she doesn't have. And I, I felt bad for her for a second because that is the mother of my children. Sure. But then at the same time, she fucked a black dude in my bed. Okay. So, you know, what do I do this? here? Do I, do I show leniency or do I go for the kill? Okay. You are a much more sympathetic character if you don't mention the ethnicities <laughs> of everyone involved here. I don't know if I believe this. It's, it, it sounds a little too, yeah. It sounds a little... I, but I, at the same time, he does have the voice of a man who got cucked. I will say that. You can hear it in his voice. And, a, and a racist voice, too. Yeah, he, sounds <laughs> both, yeah, like, he sounds both racist and cucked. Yeah. So I, it, I it, mean, it, there's my, the Jewish lawyer. Yeah, yeah. The black. I'll give you one of the two. You can't double up on Jewish lawyer I, and I, black that's, guy That's in what my I'm bed. saying. That's yeah. why I was like. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, if here's the. If this is the let's let's let's, all right, do let's the say two scenario yeah in, in the event that he, he is this is true, I would say cut back on the you know in your day to day life, skip ethnicity as a as yeah. a main descriptor of a yeah. person. I'm right? Jewish, so I'm like yeah 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 yeah. She you know I, and guess what I'm sure she fucked a lot of other dudes not in your bed. How about that? <laughs> the, <laughs> the, I bet she fucked an Italian. A hundred percent. She probably sucked off a couple Peruvians. Who who knows? <laughs> um, now, if this is the case, and let's you know, let's say it is. Um, I, I. I, you have to think about like, you know, you're right, mother, your child, all that stuff. Do you need, like, do you need the child support? Do you need all this stuff? Is it necessary for you? Um, and, and also think about like ruining her. You have a kid to think about here. Do you absolutely want to destroy this person who's supposed, who's going to be in your kid's life as well? Um, I would be the bigger person. You don't, you know, sure you got cucked, but let's see, buddy, what happened to you to deserve that? Because that's the other thing. Guy, like, if this is real, I'm guessing maybe you weren't emotionally available. Maybe you were dropping a couple N-bombs at your kid's football I have, game. I have something to say, too. You know? How can he afford the best Jewish lawyer? Why is she paying child support? Right, right, right. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. Does well, it? How can he afford the best? Best lawyer there is. Why does she owe him child That's support? That's a good point. Je- Jess is here sniffing out the bullshit. So <laughs> sorry, I'm Jewish. I'm no, yeah, 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 kind of yeah. You got, yeah, you my- got. Hey, I got my own Jew, pal. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his own yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna fu- we're gonna dump this and ter- and say it's fake. Uh, but if it's not, think about the kid. If it's not, find make- your own black dude and have him pay yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Suck off a suck off a nice black guy. Hit us with another one, Eldis. Stavi just called and explained my question very well. So I'm dating a girl right now. Okay. Uh, great woman. Really am very much in love, but I got a little bit of a problem with her. She has she's always been like the bro that is a guy friend of a friend of guys, mm-hmm. a group of friends or guys from college. Two were hitting it. <laughs> And I just went to a wedding of one of theirs, and all the girls fucking hate her because she's hot. But at the same time, she fucked a couple. So my question is, what do I do with that? How do I tell her that she? 
We're going to be long term. I don't want to talk to those fucking assholes anymore. He's a really great guy. I don't want to be really cool. But still, I don't want him talking to him, you know. That sexual tension is uncanny. Anyway, let me know, brother. Appreciate you. <laughs> so you have a problem that you're, the girl you're dating fucked guys before she knew you? Is that, is that the problem? Buddy, this comes with the territory. <laughs> like, if you were the hot girl who, you know, fucked, like, her, she fucked a couple of her friends. What, also, when did it happen? How late was it? You know, when, you know, if it's, if it's ancient history, if it happened when they were in college or they were kids or early 20s, and now you guys are in your 30s, 40s, you know. Now, if she has a relationship with one of them that's a little inappropriate or they her ex-boyfriend is still around in a weird, flirty way. That's one thing. You can have that conversation. But you can't be like, never see anyone you fucked before, bitch. You know what I mean? That's not that. You can't do that. Um, well, is there something also that she's doing that makes him feel... Right. Like, girls sometimes can be, you know... I mean, women might be upset with me saying this, <laughs> no, but please. it's really true. Yeah, like yeah. Sometimes, you know, I've been with women sometimes where they're like with with guys mm. they've been with or women they've been with. They're a little too friendly. Sure. And I get insecure. I get that. Because I'm not I don't normally get insecure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause, but sometimes they're a little too friendly and flirty. And I'm like, come on, you were with that person. Of course. Can you have some boundaries? And I've definitely had appropriate. I've definitely had an issue with like somebody I was dating and it's like, um, you know, like it's really tough when you you knew you guys were dating, you broke up, they hooked up with somebody, you get back together and they're still like have a relationship with that person. Right. That, to me, and maybe that's also wrong, right? This is just my thinking. But if it was somebody that like existed way before me, right? Like mm -hmm. way in the past and they have like. You can't just you can't be uncomfortable because they're friends with someone they slept with, right? Yeah. That's that's I something you have you to totally. get over. But if it is a if they do have like that kind of flirty relationship that's, that's making you insecure, you can talk to her about it, and also think about why am I insecure? Mm -hmm. What's at the root of this? Should I be insecure? And you have an opportunity to work on yourself too. Here a little bit, buddy. Mm -hmm. You can also be like, why does it bother me? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you know. And look, maybe he's the kind of guy who. The people he slept with, once they're done, maybe they're just two different people, right? Because there's also totally. guys who kind of have that relationship with the next. But if you guys aren't on the same page with this thing, then, you know, that can just be an issue. Um, I like it that he's like, she's always been like that bro, the friend of guys, and in a group of guys, you know, two were hitting it. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. She just sounds cool. She sounds like Jess in college, actually. Yeah. She sounds like... <laughs> she, I, I like women like that. Yeah, they're I, cool. <laughs> yeah. Right. But it could it, it could be his own thing. You're, to, you're totally right. Because people can grow out of that, too, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we all... Everyone has been, you know, everyone's like, you know... That is she that could have been in the past, but again, if she's still behaving this way, if like it's a way that's making you insecure, and she's crossing a boundary that you want to set in your relationship, you're entitled to setting some kind of boundary. But you all you're not entitled to be like, don't ever talk to somebody you fucked in the past. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's little not... fucking crazy. So, because his question is, how do I tell her? You know, we're going to be long term. I don't want you talking to these fucking assholes anymore. <laughs> like, that was his question. Yeah. So, she's going to, I, sorry, man, your ex is going to talk to some people, or your girlfriend is going to talk to some people she fucked, probably. Especially if it was like a, a casual fling. And maybe at the root of that is jealousy, right? Like, at the root of that is like, you know, I don't know. I, I yeah, it could. Eldis, El, it, it, you're fondling the mic over there. Do you have anything to say? Oh no, I thought I just thought it was funny. He was like, "How do I tell her I don't want her talking to these fucking assholes anymore? They're really great guys, but <laughs> yeah. you know, the sexual tension is uncanny." <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. You don't even dislike them. You're just mad she fucked someone before you. They're if they're ass if they were assholes, fine. But they see you said they're really great guys, man. I think. I think there's a little bit of he has some of his own shit to sort out yeah. and you have to figure out what's a fair boundary to set and talk to her about that boundary. You have to do a little soul searching somewhere between um, never look at anyone who whose penis you've sucked and uh, go, go ahead and fuck your ex whenever you want. There's somewhere there's a nice middle ground there. Yeah. And I think you got to find what's right for you um, and, and move forward, my friend. But, you know. You might have to make a compromise is no one's happy with a compromise. And I think at a certain point, that's what you're going to have to figure out here. Something that's workable for both of you. Mm -hmm. 
What else we got, LD? And by the way, folks, by the way, 904-800-STAV, call in, leave your questions. We'll get to them. So I'm 25. I've been dating my girlfriend for about a year and a half now. Um, When we first started dating, I had already had plans to buy a puppy, and we bought a puppy. (laughs) Um, <laughs> and now I just feel like she hates the dog. Oh no. Yeah. Like <laughs> we'll be having a good time and the dog will come in the room and she'll just instantly just be pissed and yelling at the dog and shit. <laughs> and it honestly is like bumming me out. Like I yeah. really, really love my dog. He's almost <laughs> a year old now and I just feel like her inability to kind of handle a high energy one year old dog. He needs some energy. Just like, I'm, yeah. I'm literally going to take a nap. <laughs> ridiculous. And you're yeah, absolutely I just correct. want to know, like, what should I do? I don't, I mean, I love everything else about her, but if she can't figure out how to. <laughs> have a dog I just don't know like I'm not getting rid of this dog <laughs> All right, man. that's awesome yeah. you heard it in his voice at the end yeah maybe it's your fault for conditioning her to such a low energy motherfucker <laughs> it's like you versus the dog it's like you're over here like what's up babe you wanna like get a burrito I don't and know, then the but dog I, comes out like I've, <laughs> I've never been suicidal yeah. until now yeah. but you heard it the only time he perked up was him being like, I'm not getting rid of this dog. At the he end. was low energy until yeah. the end. He's like, I'm not getting rid of this dog. He's been doing, he's been having this <laughs> argument with her in his head for the last like week. He was like, it's staying. The dog is staying. Um, look, man, you're 25 you're, for a year and a half. Interesting. That's a long, that's a, that's a, for a 25 year old, a year and a half relationship. That's a long, that's a long one. <laughs> so it's serious and you like her, but I'm laughing that you said he's been having the argument. A hundred percent. He's been having, he's practicing when this comes up. And what's going to be so funny is that he's going to blow his load so fast. Like when you've been practicing the argument, you go to a hundred immediately. Even if she's just like, I'm not getting rid of this. Yeah. 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 She's like, Hey, can we talk about about uh, Buck and she's like he's fucking staying bitch like that's what's gonna happen so you need to relax first of all if she brings it up you gotta take a take breather a cause I've been there too where I've been practicing a conversation know, and, the, and the person like just comes at you totally normally but you're already at a hundred cause you have you know unresolved anger issues um, oh my God. look here's the reality you, you have drawn a line here <laughs> Um, you love the dog. She doesn't like the dog. I know couples that somebody has an annoying pet and they get over it. You know, like I've known couples where somebody doesn't like, you know, my friend had a dog. His girlfriend didn't really like it. But guess what? They're married now and she puts up with the dog. It's yeah, part, it's kind of like totally a very, agree. it's a very low level. You're being like a step parent, a very low level where it's like somebody might have an annoying kid. But guess what? That kid's yeah. in your life if you really love them, right? I, and you have to be kind of nice. You don't have to be the most loving person of all time. And she doesn't have to, like, you know, play with your dog. And, but if she tolerates your dog and she, like, you know, is nice enough to it, if she's not if she's not abusive to it, basically, <laughs> if she's just neutral, then you have to... She doesn't have to love the dog the same way you don't have to get rid of the dog. You know what I mean? So... And if it becomes a problem, I think you're recognized. 25 is also the time when you realize what you want in a relationship. And maybe this guy wants someone who loves dogs. That's possible. You know what I mean? You're yeah. finding it out at 25. Every relationship you have is you kind of, that doesn't work out, unlocks a little something where you're like, oh, I liked this, but I didn't like this. So either, so she has to accept the dog, but you also have to accept that she doesn't have to love it. And if you guys can't come to a middle ground, then, you know, uh, you're fucked. <laughs> it's, it's a new re- new relationship. You got to go to a dog park and find yourself find yourself someone with a nice golden retriever. <laughs> Those are your options. You ever have pets? I totally agree with everything you just said. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and that was a brilliant answer. Oh, just response. Stop, you're please. so smart. It's really come refreshing. on. I'm blushing over here. It's true. And and I I I get concerned with people who don't like animals. Like I know I'm not saying she doesn't like animals, but. 
You're right. And plus, he's he's still young. Oh, yeah. she, whatever the They're dog. They're both I young. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and the dog. Oh, the dog, you're and, right. The dog's and a year old, yeah. it's like, she was into it when it first, like, you can't, she was okay with it at first. What's he yeah, supposed to yeah. do? Get rid of the dog yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, he's attached course. emotionally to the animal. Like, people no, are nuts. 100%. She needs to get over it. Yeah. Yeah. But she doesn't have to be super loving either. No, she, she does. You're she right. I love like, what you said. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, good luck, pal. We'll see. Yeah, I'd love one day to have a, I, I travel too much right Me now to too. have a pet. Me too. I, I, I've had pets my whole life, but I, I can't now. I want a big, crazy. fat bulldog at some point. <gasps> love them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want yeah, to yeah. bite them. Yeah, I just yeah, love yeah. them so much. I want to, wear, I want to have matching tracksuits with my dog someday. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's do Let's do uh, another one before Jess has to yeah, go. Yeah, it's 12.25. We're, we're getting close so. to 12.30, so okay. we'll do one more with Jess here. Starve's another... Australian here. Australian? Uh, I've just started open mics at 26. Hey, no. uh, done three or four, and of course, I've told everyone oh, that I am now officially a comedian. Um, Boo. In Australia, there isn't as much of a scene, so at what point in this your comedy guy. career would you consider moving for it to get more spots? What? And how long you know, should you be trying open mics before you're saying, hey, maybe I'm not fucking funny? Or not. Okay. Love the show. That's humble. Oh, At right. least he ended it with the end, because before he yeah. was like, I've done about three open mics, <laughs> and I'm thinking maybe I should move to New York. <laughs> when can I do the Beacon Theatre? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can you get me a sport at the cellar? <laughs> um, so good. I'm glad you a added the end part. But there is yeah. nothing like three or four mics in confidence. We are like, oh, I'm going oh. to be famous. But first of all, <laughs> uh, let's just discuss for a second Yes. how a lot of the newer comics have no humility. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, and yeah, they yeah, literally yeah. talk to me yeah. as if I'm just starting. I, I know. It's like, no, seriously, this, the bring it down a notch. The, demo the problem with the internet, the democratizing I, force, I yep. is that like I remember being <laughs> an open micer and thinking I deserve a special, right? <laughs> And I was very wrong. I was absolutely <laughs> wrong. But if I could have, I would have filmed a special. I didn't have the ability to. Now, the way you, the, like, a big way that your comedy career, that you put out content is through clips, through YouTube. Anyone has the opportunity to yeah. do it. And if I was starting now, I would 100% put my atrocious material <laughs> on the internet. And guess what? Because the algorithm's fucking dumb, some of it might have gone viral, and I might have thought... Oh, sick. I'm good. I deserve to do this. And so that there is a problem where they're like, oh, I'm ready to go because I have access to the things that make you famous. And I kind of feel like, look, I feel bad because I've put a lot of my career has been helped by putting out a bunch of crowd work clips. But I did comedy. Don't feel bad. I did comedy Don't for feel 15, bad. Like, or what is it, 13 it years? It doesn't matter. Don't 13 feel years. bad. Crowd work. Let me explain something. But what I'm you saying, and I no, no. are very good at crowd work, sure. and there are 95 percent of people suck at it. But that's what I mean. It's, it's an like, art. I feel like a, 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 a it, like I feel like I'm running Exxon. Do you know what I mean? It's like I'm getting rich off this thing that's ruining the environment. You know, like I'm getting rich off crowd work. No, and then it's like you're thinking, and everyone is way. doing crowd work, and it's most of it is bad. I know, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You're you and I are at the upper level of it, sure. so it doesn't matter. We are putting out a good product, yeah, and then yeah, it's yeah. like it's like how can I describe it? It's like a product where there's amazing TVs and there's horrific TV. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, a, it's yeah, a yeah, business, yeah. and a lot of so, new comics you plug in their TV and it electrocutes you. Right, but <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, yeah, TV's yeah. a dumb reference. But yeah. I'm just saying, like, there's there's great yeah. products and there's horrible products. And sure. we, we put out an incredible stuff and we're getting a huge amount of followers and making money off of it and packing rooms. And then there's people who have really horrible a crowd work and she, we can't control that. I agree. I, I agree with you, though, with, like, when it's young comics because it's so funny. With comedy, I consider myself a comedy Republican. Where I'm like, the rich should get rich. The good people at comedy should get all the resources. Yeah. And then open micers I, should have to claw. Yeah. <laughs> you should be, well, you know. I'm saying it's like, it, 
it's one thing on the internet, but then if you're doing comedy and you're not getting any response and you're bombing and you think you did great, you need to go to a mental institution. Well, that, that is the thing about I'll this. I'll get a standing ovation <laughs> yeah, 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 from yeah, a thousand yeah. people and think I didn't do great. Yeah, well, that's so, that's who's good at comedy. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So these people who are doing it and not doing well, and then they, they have no humility when they meet me who are just starting. Like these, yeah. a lot of these, a lot of them are amazing, yeah. but there's a bunch who are especially like, when I'm talking about like female comics and I'll meet them on at clubs like on the road or in New York and they, they're like hi how are you um, nah, nah. I'm like you know honey I've been doing this 24 years you, too much you just fucking started nine <laughs> yeah. months ago yeah. I am I am royalty to you yeah. Yeah. and I'm, believe me I'm filled with self hatred yeah. but when I met the women who started before yes. me I was a geisha girl I uh. literally <laughs> talked to them like hello can I get you anything to drink oh. would, would you like when I they were fucking they were I was getting Getting them water. I was like, can I do anything? To- yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. still like that with Margaret Cho and all these sure. women. They're friends of mine. Yeah. They're social friends of mine. Yeah. And I'm still like, I kiss the ground they walk on. No, I fully, I mean, I they do. They paved the way for me. A hundred percent. There is yeah. like, and that's that, it is funny because usually the open mic confidence gets bludgeoned out of you when you bomb enough right, times right and there is a re- that isn't really happening no it's not <laughs> happening it's not happening. happening anymore yeah so like but let's go back to our australian friend yeah. here so you you heard that buddy don't you're you're horrific at stand-up i want you to understand that <laughs> even if one day you'll you be good <laughs> even if one day he'll be good yeah. there is n- right now and for the next minimum three years you're atrocious at stand-up comedy <laughs> And you have You're to understand so that. <laughs> That's just how it works, right? So at one point in your comedy career, would you consider moving? I would say, well, where are you? Are you in one of the big cities in Australia? Because I think Melbourne and um, Sydney both have pretty good scenes. So, you know, go yeah. somewhere where you can get up as much as possible. The only advice for young comics, and I think you'll agree, is like get on stage and start to kill more than you bomb. And like, (laughs) I know that sounds like, duh, dumbass. That's obviously what you should do. But that's, there's no other advice. None. You have to figure it. And the the beauty and the scary thing is you have to figure it out yourself. Mm -hmm. No one can tell you how to do it. Even if you try and steal a style, you try and steal jokes, eventually it'll catch up to you. You have to generate it yourself. Um, And in terms of how long she'd be trying before, you know, giving up, that's everybody's, you know, that's up to everybody. I mean, I remember thinking, like, I just have to give, like, moving, when I moved to New York, I was like, I just have to give this a shot for, I was like, I gave myself five years. Mm-hmm. And I was like, if nothing happens, you know, after five years, I moved here when I was 26. Uh, I was like, I'll just fucking go to Baltimore. I'll be, I'll run a local showcase. I still love stand up. I'm never going to stop doing it, but I'll get a real job and it'll always be a part of my life. And everyone has to make that decision for themselves because it is a fucking horrible life. <laughs> and it's getting, I it's, say it's, it every day. It's, it's, it's the it's, worst thing I ever did. And it's getting harder. That's the other thing. It's like, yeah. it's like it's harder to carve out a career. And even like what we're talking about where a young comic can go viral, it's like, well, I think I think it what helped me was that like um, I put out these clips and then people come out to see me and I've been working really hard at stand-up for you know, I've been doing it 13 years, so my, I'm good at stand-up. People who discover you through uh, a clip that goes viral or something, they come to see you. You've been doing it 24 years. You're fucking great at comedy. And it like, it. there's a retention thing where it's like, you see other people who might have huge internet followings that might even sell more tickets the first round, but they don't have that kind of like retention. Mm-hmm. And that's the hard part with stand-up is like now it takes self-discipline to be like, to know yourself and be like, when am I ready to put myself out mm-hmm. there? And the old rule used to be 10 years. Yeah. That used to be the benchmark was like, yeah, was. you're not even good at comedy. You don't. We don't even consider you a comedian until you've been doing it 10 years, which I remember being 19 and being like, what? 10 years? <laughs> yeah. That's more than my half my life. <laughs> That's yeah. what, you know? And so, but now, now that I'm 33, about to turn 34, I... It was true. Like, people would say it, and I thought, that's stupid. These old guys, they don't fucking get it. And it happened. It became 10 years, and I was like, oh, wow, I'm I'm actually better at comedy. Something did, a switch did flip. Um, so, you know, just do it. Do it as much as you can. Probably quit, if we're being honest with you, my Australian <laughs> friend. The odds are just quit. You're so funny. But, but if you do love it and you have to do it, 
<laughs> give yourself a few years of open mics, see it out. And the nice thing is, it doesn't have to be your job, right? If you're young, it's like, you know, do something else. You're 26. You're not going to get paid for years. I remember when I, when I made money, the first, I was 24, and I did all the local gigs I possibly could have. And I, I featured at, Mag I was at Magoobies, I was in Baltimore, I was featuring at Magoobies, I was featuring at the Draft House. And in three months, I made like a nice amount of money. And I was like, I'm quitting my job. I can do it. <laughs> and it turned out I had just gotten every gig I was going to get for the next right, right. six months. I, I knew you were going <laughs> to say yeah. that. And then you had to no I was gig. like, what? And then I had to just get a job at a paint store again. But good luck, pal. Again, it's it's a it's a bad life. It's a bad choice. But <laughs> give yourself a couple years and then see it out. Get yourself five good minutes, then ten good minutes. And then you can, you know, if it's going okay and you can get a job at a big city, try it that way. Um, we don't want to keep you just, we know you got you to gotta be somewhere. We'd love that. We, we could do hours if you. Hours if you, if, I could do, yeah. So please come back. We'd I love, love you. We'd love You're to so have you. smart. Oh, stop it. Come on, I'm <laughs> blushing. such a good person. Um, so what do you want to plug before you get out of here? We want people to come see you. I have a ton of road dates coming up at jessicakerson.com, K-I-R-S-O-N. And then I'm on TikTok, Jessica Kirsten. I put up the crowd work clips love it. like you do. Love it. And um, Instagram and, you know, I, I'm on YouTube. I have a big YouTube page. Page, Jessica Kirsten get in there this yeah. will be on YouTube so go click awesome. click Subscribe. on over to Jess's uh click on over to Jess's page thank you so much for doing it Jess we're gonna we'll we'll pause here we'll say bye to Jess I mean I'll just will do a couple couple questions here to, awesome. to end them but that's gonna do it for Jess guys and by the time you see it will be there will just be a, a seamless shift but we're gonna awesome. be gone for five minutes <laughs> all right we're back folks Jess had to run um, what a great, she was so great though. We got to have her back. So much shit I wanted to ask her about, but me and others are going to rock you with a couple more calls here. LD, what do we got, dude? Uh, let's go to this one. Hey, Stav, this is Mike from Philly. Um, I hope this question gets answered on the Spotify because, uh, <laughs> I'm too broke to afford this. You're Patreon. in luck, you fucking broke uh, piece of shit. <laughs> but yeah, so I've been seeing this girl for like four months and then we just became official like last month. Okay. Uh, so, but yeah, so she has some issue in her family that she won't tell me about. Ruh -ruh. And she said she doesn't have the emotional availability right now. So we're going on a break. And, uh, so I started seeing other girls. Okay. But I kind of feel bad, but should I be feeling bad? And, uh, if I shouldn't, then it's whatever, but. Uh, should I tell her afterwards when we get back together? <laughs> uh, yeah, let me know, because I it feel it's a weird gray area where we're not talking right now. Oh, man. But I don't really know what's acceptable and what's not. So, uh, yeah, if you have any advice, let me know. Thanks. This man's getting his Ross from Friends on. <laughs> this man's, we were on a break! <laughs> this is an age-old dilemma. Now, here's the reality. Um... This is kind of like a this is like a game of chicken where it's like if she doesn't fuck anyone and you fuck someone, yeah, technically you're right, but how's she going to feel about it? You know what I mean? Um now, here's the other the good news for you that's actually not good news is that it sounds like she wanted to break up with you without saying it, right? Doesn't this sound like a coward's breakup to you? I have an issue in my family. I don't have the emotional availability right now. That's a weird Let's thing. Let's go on a break. That's a weird thing to go on the break over. You think it would just be like, I have this thing. I don't want to talk to you about it at the moment. But to go on the I break can't be over, on a relationship. it's just a little. Because how did it even come up? What did he say? They were, they were seeing each other for four months and then became official last month. Right, right. Okay. So te you haven't done anything wrong, technically. Right? Um, are you keeping in contact with her at all? Or are you just on a complete break? Um, should you feel bad about it? I mean, technically no, but at the same time, it's like it's like beating a video game. It's like you know, you know, you know, Angry Birds will give you three stars if you really crush the level. <laughs> You're not gonna get a three star relationship if you fucked another bitch. <laughs> you, know, you might get two stars. You know what I mean. You might even get. You might barely squeak by the level with one star. <laughs> but the way you really crush a break with someone that you really love is not fucking other girls. You know what I mean. Uh, and look, you again. You didn't do anything wrong. I'm and other people might have other um, 
other, uh, you know, perspectives on this. But if I were on a break with somebody I really cared about and she fucked somebody else and I didn't, I would still, I would be like, all right, that's fine. You know, you got me, but I'm a little disappointed. Um, that's all. But that's, you've already done it, right? And you said you're in a gray area. So, you know, you're, you're, fi you're fine. And you'll only really know when, when, if and when you get back together. But there's also a chance that no one in her family has any other issues and her ex-boyfriend with a bigger penis than you texted her. <laughs> and that might be devastating to hear, but that's a possibility too. Um, I think you're okay. And depending on how she views things philosophically, you're probably fine. Do you have to bring it up? No. I don't think you have to bring it up un... Yeah. Like, if, if she asks you, that's a weird thing to be like, oh, I'd rather not say. Because <laughs> that means I've definitely fucked a bunch of bitches. You should be like, I don't have the emotional availability <laughs> to talk about it right now. <laughs> you should be like, actually, my uncle's back in rehab. So I can't confirm or deny whether I got dumb. <laughs> uh, good luck, Mike from Philly. Let us know how it goes and if she ever calls you back even. Let's get another one going, Eldo. Okay. Is this the one? No. Dumbass. Oh, here we go. Hey, what's up, Stav? Uh, my name's Dan. Love the show. Hey, Dan. Um, so I've got a question about my job for you. Um, so I'm in Los Angeles. I work at a smoke shop. Nice. And uh, I don't know if you saw, but recently California banned um, flavored vape products. Um, <laughs> so the issue is that we've got a bunch of like these vapes in our inventory and the shop hasn't been doing so well since this uh, law was passed. Ooh. And, you know, we can't sell them because Lip it's illegal tarts, now. Crushing um, anyway, small my boss <laughs> yet again kind of putting like a little bit of pressure on the workers. Um, it's just me and a couple of other guys to like figure out a way to sell these. Um, and it's like, my thing is I don't want to get involved in like the, you know, criminal, anything, any criminal kind of underworld like here in LA. Uh, Selling vapes, you fucking um, pussy. You know, I can sell, you know, five or 10 maybe to my homies, but like I can't, you know, we have hundreds of these, um, at this point. So, you know, the shop's not doing well. I don't want it to go out of business. Um, like what do I do here? Do I just tell them, you know, no, that, you know, or what, what, what do you think I should do? Thanks. <laughs> yeah. No shit. You don't want to get involved in crime. You got nervous leaving a voicemail. <laughs> Imagine him at a drug deal. He's getting robbed by Cubans so fast. <laughs> Um, what do you think? What do I think? So this guy wants you to sell the vapes off, like offline, basically. Is that what he's saying? Yeah. He, he, he says his boss is like pressuring them to just figure out a way to move them. This is so crazy. Cause it's like, I'm shocked that this shop owner is even that ethical and he wouldn't just be like, if someone wants it, just sell it to them. Yeah. Well, that's why this guy's a fuck. Your boss is a piece of shit here. Right. Cause if he, if he really had fat nuts, he would just be like, Sell them at the store. Keep selling them at the store. What does he want? He wants you to fucking... He wants to be your supplier. This guy thinks he's got cocaine. <laughs> and you got to kick up to him. <laughs> if I were you, I would steal these from your fucking stupid boss and sell them for a profit. Now, you're both bitches here. <laughs> your boss is a bitch for taking advantage of his employers and trying to get them to assume all the risk. You're a pussy for thinking you're in the criminal underworld <laughs> for selling mango ice vapes. To fucking children. Um, yeah, I mean, look, if your boss wants you to sell these off the record, then you should get a cut of them. Definitely, you're not selling these for your hourly wage. That's in, on your own time. That's fucking insane. Yeah. So, um, you know, whatever. I would just, I, I would, if I were you, I would sell them and I would take a cut of it. I wouldn't sell them on my time off. I would buy them wholesale from my boss and sell them. Because what, what do you mean you get involved in criminal underworld, dude? Yeah. You just need to find like 10 guys who would, who would you know, people love these flavored vapes. And obviously you don't sell them to kids, but like 
There's plenty of fucking adult men that are... What are you smoking on right now, Elders? I got a little elf bar. <laughs> What's, what flavor is that? Uh, I think it's peach mango peach watermelon. Peach mango watermelon. For children, <laughs> legit. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I would do. I would... If your boss is trying to get you to... If he's trying to get you to sell them off the clock, then the part that offends me is that he's trying to eke work out of you for nothing. Yeah. But if he's like, hey... You can, if they cost whatever they cost, how much does that bar cost, Eldis? This one was kind of pricey. It was like 20 bucks or something. 20 bucks, but he's like, hey, I'll sell them to you for five. He, if he just wants to get them off his books or he's like, I'll sell them for you for 10, you can sell them for 20. I would do that because I, I know I love money, dude. I know how to fucking take the brick and flip it, <laughs> but you're a fucking <laughs> pussy. Yeah, I used to sell fucking weed in high school. <laughs> I used to I used to use it to buy wings and nachos from Nachos Mamas in Canton, and smoke hookah with it. Yeah, um, you were really good at tracking your profit and losses, <laughs> and not smoking. I a definitely lot of the didn't weed smoke either. most of the weed I sold. I definitely didn't sell weed for one entire year. And after you took out uh, takeout orders and the weed I smoked, ended up with five hundred dollars. I remember getting ready for college and being like, I must have like. 10 grand in here and it was $570. I was like, what? I was like, how did this happen? So anyway, you're a bitch and your boss is a bitch, but um, you know, that's what I would do, buddy. I wouldn't work for free for this piece of shit, but I also, this is an opportunity to make a little extra cash potentially. Uh, and I don't, and that was all parody and I don't condone selling anything illegal to anyone. I don't condone illegal activity either. I know I have a flavored vape, and it's illegal in New York. <laughs> oh, I got shit. this shit in Delaware. And that, <laughs> that's fake. He painted it. He's but that's <laughs> that's actually water vapor. Next question. All right. Um, I'm a fellow uncut male from Baltimore area. <laughs> the reason for my call is because I see that you guys questions like this to talk about raunchy shit. Sure. Um, I actually have some fungus on my dick. Mm. I'm not sure if it's actually fungus, but it's a rash <laughs> under my wiener, like Ooh, the head of it. Under a wiener. Um, and I'm kind of nervous to go to the doctor um, to show them my dick. <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of like a phobia I have. Oh, man. Um, I was just wondering uh, what you guys think I should do. I mean... It's been going on for about two weeks. That's it disgusting. might be an STD. Um, it might just be fungus because I'm dirty. Ew, dude. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if you guys could help out, I would really appreciate it. This guy's disgusting. Um, you identify as dirty. It's one thing to be musty, but to be like, yeah, I smell like shit. I don't shower. It's suspect that he calls it a fungus first before a rash. Right. Like what he's describing, I'd be like, okay, I would probably just call that a rash for sure and not jump to conclusions. So under the head of his dick. Now, whatever. This guy being disgusting aside, <laughs> um, and he's giving a bad name to the uncircumcised community, by the way. <laughs> this is exactly what people think of us. You motherfucker. How dare you, dude? Pull up your pants. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you're giving the fucking cut community. They're looking down on us because your dick is fucking disgusting. <laughs> so you definitely got to go to the doctor fast for all of us. Um, so he's got a phobia of showing the doctor his dick. You got to get over that, brother. He's a fucking doctor or she's a doctor. Have you, I will say there was one time I went to the urologist when in like in college uh, when I was pissing all the time, which just never no one ever solved. Uh, but I was pissing all the time, and I was like, and I had this old Jewish doctor, old Jewish man doctor, and I was like, all right, fine, like this guy see my little ass dick soft as hell, no big deal. And then he was training this young girl, this you know woman. <laughs> she was, but she was like mid twenties. She wasn't hot, but she was like, she was like super hot, but she was like an attractive younger woman, kind of honestly, kind of what I go for. Yeah, like curly hair, like again, not super hot, but like. Absolutely, I would have fucked her. And she, and somehow my dick shrank even smaller than it was because I was scared. She was literally like holding my dick like this with her blue. Th and I was just like, she's like, mm, kind of a tight foreskin. Just like remarking on how fucked up my penis is. 
And she was like nervous because she's getting the guys watching her with a clipboard over her shoulder. <laughs> you know how humiliating that was to just ha show my little like my dick shrank. My dick was like one inch at that moment. I don't know what happened. It was like the Grinch's heart. I thought was, you said it shrank. Huh? I thought you said it Shut shrank. The, yeah. <laughs> It did shrink, Eldis. <laughs> you okay, piece okay. of shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> My dick is not too good soft to begin with. Um, but it got so much smaller. Anyway... I survived, though, and I got my penis checked out a little bit. And you have to just do that, too. How fucking dirty are you? Do you just not shower? What are you really scared of here? I... I have a little expertise here. Please, Eldis. I oh, yeah, you have yeast infections I on I, too, have dick. had fungus on my dick. <laughs> I keep calling them yeast infections. I'm like, I got to change how I'm describing that. I think athlete's thrush is more appropriate for what I've d dealt with in the past. But I, too, have had, uh, you know, yeast infections or whatever under my sure. dick. Sure. Makes your dick look fucked up. It's like... It's like weird spots on it. It, yeah. it. it spooked me out. And when this guy says he has a phobia of going to the doctor, I think what he really means is he's scared he has an STD. Right. Which is kind of the zone I was in right. when I had this shit too. Were um, you raw dogging back then, Eldis? Uh, yeah, with my partner. I mean, oh, it you, was, were, you were in a relationship. It happened, it happened a couple times um, in Baltimore, and then it like happened a couple times in New York But as never well. when you were a bachelor out on the town. I guess when I was technically single, it happened in New York. Okay. Um, but, yeah. You were, but you were using condoms. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but, you know, you still, you still never know. Whatever. Um, sure. But... So, but yeah, just go get it checked out. I went to like, I remember going to like, if you don't want to go to the doctors, go to like a Planned Parenthood or something. Uh, That's a good solution yeah. here. They're, they'll, they're right up your alley for shit like this. I remember one time I went, when I was here in New York, I went to this Planned Parenthood and I was like nervous. They were looking at my dick and <laughs> it was like, this is a similar thing. It's like a young female doctor. Yeah, she yeah, was, yeah. she's like super cool, made me feel at ease. And I was like, I was, I was clearly nervous because she was like, she just looked at my dick. She's like, nope, you just have thrush. Just take some little anti-fungus yeah. and shit. And by the way, this shit is gross. It's disgusting, but not because of the thrush. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a trained medical professional, so you, you get, I'm not showing my disdain for your fucked up <laughs> penis right now. But her, her examination of it was literally like five seconds. She's like, no, you're good. Just take this prescription, blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, my dick was back in my underwear in like five seconds. And then she was like, well, listen, I see your blood pressure is pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was too fat and unhealthy. And she was like, the dick's whatever. But you seem like you yeah. got some other health shit you really need to attend yeah, to. Yeah, I'm sure this guy's that way too. He, he says he's dirty. He's like, I might be a fungus because I'm dirty. So maybe there's other shit you need to figure out, pal. Hey, man, those Baltimore row homes, they're musty, they're damn. I they think they're a beautiful place out. to grow up. <laughs> you get a real fine class of person out of those Baltimore row homes. Um, but, right. yeah, just go to the doctor. It probably is just some fucking nasty-ass fungus shit, but yeah. it'll probably just give you some pills. And, and wash your penis, clean pal. Clean your dick, dude. And stop raw-dogging the disgusting women that would fuck a guy like you. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, well, listen, folks. We got a busy day over here at Stavi Baby Enterprises. I got a, I got a couple calls for some uh, stuff to get to. Our guest had to go early. We'll have her back. She was so great. Uh, but thank you so much for listening. As always, if you enjoyed the show, we have a Patreon bonus episode once a week. Somebody's ringing the doorbell? <laughs> we have a Patreon bonus episode once a week um, Extra episode We just had Karen Fian We just had Sean Patton on We're going to have some great guests coming up You're going to love them JP McDade is going to make another appearance uh, If you like the show You want it twice a week We put out this free one We also have a Patreon But thank you Subscribe to the YouTube Subscribe Leave a nice comment Leave a nice review online Follow Eldis on the fucking social media and thank you very much, guys. Someone's ringing our doorbell. We got to go. <laughs>